Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. How's everyone doing tonight? Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Some support. All right. Um, can I tell you an awkward moment I just had? Um, so I went to speech therapy for like almost a year at school. They offered it. My dad was like, you should do it. It'd be great because I used to get super nervous. I'll get to the point. So the, she taught us like these mouth exercises. I always do them before I come up. So it looks like Peter Piper picked a pepper. Like I do all that, right? So it was awkward because I made contact, like eye contact with like star. And I'm going like this. And she's like, <laughs> and it was just really awkward. I was like, what do you say after that? I'm like, oh, wait, sorry. <laughs> um, no, but also, too, I want to give a shout out to Danielle. Whenever I speak, you're usually the one who, like, does first-time guests. So, like, we should make a collab or something. We should. <laughs> and shout out to my sister, Alexis. She's speaking across the street in youth. So I love you, Alexis. Hope you do good. Um, but today, can we put up the graphic, please? The price is right. That is pretty much the gist of what we're going to talk about today. So can you put up the images, please? We're going to play The Price is Right, actually. We're going to do that. Okay. So we have a six-month supply of wipes. Can a bunch of people just throw out some prices for what we think that costs? Twenty. dollars Wow. That's intense. Those are some cheap wipes. 300 Okay. 300 Huh? 500 500 520 600 4 Okay, okay, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, I get it, man, you guys are 400, like, hey, hey, <laughs> you look all looking at me, all right, next one, let's see, all right, so the iPhone X, all right, let's think about how much that costs, what, a thousand, okay, all right, well, what else, what else do we think, okay, okay, all right, all right, all right, let's pause, guys, let's pause before we start a riot, okay, the next one, Okay, then the vacation package. Yeah? 4 2, you think? Yeah? 4,000? Okay. All right, all right. You said $1, Elliot? Really? Uh, <laughs> uh, all right, so let's show the prices. All right, so the six month supply costs $385. Wow, I don't think I'd invest in that. That's $1,000, the iPhone X. And then, dang, the vacation package was seven grand. That's intense. I don't know if I, you know, would ever pay for a vacation package, but it's okay. All right. So the thing is, is like the price is right. So most of the time, like when you go into the store, like you know what you're willing to spend, right? Can I tell you guys a funny story? I'm actually going to call up my boy Elliot. Elliot, can you stand up real quick? Yes, Elliot. That's Elliot. Can we wave to Elliot? Hi, Elliot. All right, you can sit back down. Okay, so I'm with Elliot, right? And I'm going to go buy turtles. Um, <laughs> we're going to go buy turtles in, in, like, the market, right? So they're, like, 10 bucks, okay? 10 bucks, okay, for two turtles. All right, not bad, okay? But he's like, watch, let me negotiate for you. And I was like, all right, <laughs> all right. I'm like, 10 bucks is not a bad deal at all. <laughs> like, it's 10 bucks for two turtles. He's like, hey, 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 all right, all we got is $5 cash. What can you do for me? And she's like, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's like, nothing, six bucks? Mm -mm. And then I was like, and then he's like, all right, I'm done. And I had the money for it. So you know how embarrassing that is? I'm like, oh, okay, um, let me transfer, you know, to buy myself time to like get over the embarrassment. But it, that was just a funny story of one time when I thought the price was right, but it wasn't. Um, so thank you, Elliot. I'm not going to bring you next time. Um, but the thing is, is like, we know the pricing, right, of things we love. You know, we save up for things, right? Who saves in here? That's like a bad word for finances. <laughs> no one saves anymore. <laughs> like, mm, no, just kind of wheel and deal and guess on it. But the thing is, is like, we know how much things cost. We put a value to things, right? So the iPhone X, that's pretty valuable, right? It's nice, has the whole face thing. I would never buy that, honestly. That's like $1,000 I could put somewhere else. But it's like, oh, huh, yeah, it unlocks it. But the thing is, like, we put value on it, right? When you drop your phone, doesn't your heart drop? Like, it, your heart drops with it, <laughs> like, because you, you put that much value on it. You know what I mean? Like, you drop a piece of toilet paper, like, oh, no, you just pick it back up. It's not much value. Like, it's like, all right, it's already going somewhere dirty. It's going to be fine. <laughs> it's true. But the thing is, is like, so 
What value do you put on your relationship with God? Mm. <laughs> right? The thing is, like, most of the time we're just like, yeah, like, I love God, but we don't put the value on it. And the thing is, is like, who's felt stuck before in a place? Like, either, like, whether it be, like, you're depressed, you're financially stuck, you know, and you're like, I don't know what to do. Your, your friendships, they're going downhill. And, and you're like, dude, what the heck's going on? And most of the times, the thing is, is like, there's a root to everything that happens in our lives. There's a root. Things happen for a reason, right? You've heard that? Like, things happen for a reason. Like, my stars are aligned. Like, no. But the thing is, is like, things happen for a reason. And when we, when we look back at the root, it's like, did you put your value on God? You don't get it. It's okay. We're going to get there. So the thing is, is like, we could be going through life, right? Things happen. We get a little confused. Start, stuff starts going down. But it's like, where did you put your value on God? Because you know what? When we put our value on God, things go well. You know what I mean? So let me show you. You guys don't believe me still. You still don't believe me. You guys are a tough crowd right now. All right, so you want to hear some statistics? All right, trust me, this is going to rock your world. Are you sure you're ready for it? All right, so this is heavy. So you know what's crazy? So most Christian marriages are likely more to fail than the atheist marriages. Isn't that crazy? Like, like, our, like divorce rate in church is like bigger than like, you know, your average Joe. Like, it's sad. And the thing is, when I looked up the statistics, it said the born again believer. It didn't just say Christian. Like, they, they, they added a knife to it, born again believer. You know, <laughs> born again believers are more likely to, you know, and then not only that, it's about to get more intense. Did you know? And it's sad. But it's true that 50% of men in the church are addicted to pornography. And it's on a weekly basis. Like, it's sad. And, and the thing is, is like on the statistic, it was saying like, most of the time you're sitting next to one. But and not in this church. They excluded that. They said, elevate church, not here. You know, I just want to make that disclosure. So you're good. All right. Made the disclosure. No, but also, 70% of people around my age, 18, 19, the ones who are already about to leave the youth ministry, 70% of them end up leaving the church and never coming back. Isn't that crazy? So that tells you, where is the church putting their value on God? The price isn't right. It, trust me, it isn't. Because if, if the price was right, if we valued God correctly, those things wouldn't be happening at all. Still don't believe me. It's all right. Can I tell you a funny story? It's about me, like usual. Okay, so growing up, you know, we all have things we all fall short of, right? We're, who's perfect here? Well, Jasmine, you better watch it. Uh, but the thing is, is like, no one's perfect. We all have our faults. We all know that in our lives right now, there's things that we're dealing with personally. Whether you deal with anger, you deal with like a temper, you deal with a lot of sadness. There's all something that we, ha we all fall short of that we want to change. But when I was growing up, I was a big liar big liar. And I was mischievous, sneaky. So when my report card came and I knew I had a C, which a C in my house was like, like you see my dad already pulling off the belt. You know what I mean? <laughs> a C was unacceptable. So when I knew I had a C, and this is when they mailed report cards, I was like, I knew the day. I'd even ask my teacher. I'd be like, so when did the report cards get mailed? My, my parents want to know. No, they didn't. Right? So I would wait. I would throw it away. And I'd, I'd tell my mom, hey, hey mom, you know, they're, they're, they're sending the report card next month. Oh, okay, Isaac, all right. Your grades are good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I would think that I'd give myself a month to pull it together. Heck no. Most of us were like on the weight plans, like, like yeah, we're going to go and do it. And then you end up going to the gym once. So it's, it's like that. Okay, so here's a funny thing. So one day God wanted to spank me, I guess, because... I was going to school. My mom was like, hey, you have to go to after school daycare, blah, 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 um, because I'm working late. That day, she ended up not working late, and she came, like, right on time after school, and she didn't let me know. So there's this thing called car line at my school. So, like, all the teachers would line up and, like, escort kids to the cars, right? And my mom goes to the line of my teacher, all right? And then she's like, oh, hi, Virginia. You know, like how teachers know. Hi. You know? They're like secret agents from the CIH, highly trained, you know, with that smile, but they mean mischief. No, but she's like, hi, Virginia. She's like, oh, hi. Blah, blah. How's your son doing at home? Right? You know how they start with that? She's like, um, 
he's good. Um, oh, really? So like, have, a, have you looked at his report card lately? She's like, oh, that's coming next month. She's like, what are you talking about? That already came last month. And then like, you know, I wasn't there for that. You know, I'm playing, thinking I'm like having a great time because I don't know. And she's like, okay, well, let me get someone to go get Isaac to, to get him for you, blah, 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 so you guys can leave. And then, and then she's like, oh my God. Like my mom, like I could only imagine her. She's pissed. And she's like, so where's he, where's he falling off in? She's like, history. He's like done like none of the homework for it. Right? And then, right, so they, they bring me here, and I see that my teacher's talking to my mom, and I'm like, just like my heart drops. I'm like, <sighs> you know, like, it, like music's playing in my, in my ear, and I'm like, oh my God, no. Right? So, like, you know, when like the gates of hell opened, that's what, like, when my teacher opened the door <laughs> to the car, and right when I knew that door was gonna close, I was like counting the last breaths I take. <sighs> and then my mom turns around, because <laughs> the teacher's still watching. <laughs> I said, what the heck did you do? Like, you know, she just goes off, you know, because my mom's like a sour patch. She's sweet, but then she turns sour real quick. Because, um, <laughs> so then, like, I get home, okay? I already had an earful, okay? But that's not how my mom works. My mom calls the airstrike on me, so my dad. Um, and then <laughs> my dad hears about it, and then he's like, oh, my God. He's like, because my dad, like, his grades are like, boom. Like, Alexis always had, like, amazing grades. Me, no. So this is the story of my life back then. So he's like, Isaac. Where did you fall off on? But have you ever like gone so far into your mess or gone so far into like never being committed? He's like, so how much, how much have you missed? But here it comes back. But you've been so far gone. So I was so far gone in my grades, I couldn't even tell him what I'm missing. Like that's how, that's how much I was caught up in the lie. I was like, I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't even know. And that even got him more furious, right? So he emails my teacher, right? She sends him everything I'm missing. It's like half the book, okay? And he's like, all right, this is like, I think it was like a Tuesday. He's like, you have three days. So you have till Saturday at 12 a.m. to finish everything, okay? And then like, that wasn't enough, so he reconditioned me with amazing belt whooping. You know what I mean? I became the best student in a matter of seconds. <laughs> like, <laughs> right? I finished it. I became the best student grinding. That's all I do. <laughs> and, I, and I finished it all at like Friday at 11 p.m., right? And I was like, I did it. Woo. And, he's, and my dad, because my dad forgets a lot because he has a lot going on. He's like, why are you rushing through your homework? I was like, dad, you told me I had three days. He's like, I did? And I was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. It was bad. But the thing is, is like, so when our lives fall apart, it's because we didn't put the value on God. All right? So I didn't put the value on school, so it made sense that Isaac started failing, right? So, but we become so, like, dumbfounded when we don't, re- like, when we realize our lives are falling apart. And we're like, where's God? And it's simple. You didn't put your value on him. It's that simple. No one needs to write a book on it, honestly. It's like right there in the Bible. The book's already written. You don't need to get a self-help book to tell you. You're not doing it. Clearly. That's the answer. You're not doing it. And the thing is, is like, God chooses, you know, us no matter where we've been. He knows our mistakes. He knows where we're at. Okay, so my sister, she's like the the flower child of the family. (laughs) I always say that. She's like, you know, sweet Alexis when she sings, you know? <laughs> sweet Alexis, that's honestly who she is. She's so genuine. She's so in- innocent. She's just amazing. Like, I love my sister. Like, if, if I ever want to put on, like, like, Nick Jr., I just go to my sister. <laughs> um, because she's like, she's just that amazing and that sweet. But me, it's like, no, heck no. I'm like Nick at night. <laughs> when, you, when you tell your kids not to watch that, that show, like, I'm that show. You know what I mean? Like, that's just how I was growing up. I was just the, the bad child, the bad kid, right? So, I mean, a lot of you don't know my story, and I ain't about to tell you, okay? But, you know, there's some judges in the church. But, but the thing is, is, like, God knows what you've done. God knows what I've done, okay? But he still chooses us, regardless and the thing is, a lot of the times we discount ourselves and we take the value off of God because of the things we've done, because of the shame, because of the guilt, because of the depression, because we can become so consumed with it and we've, re- 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 we've rewired our minds to think this is forever, that we, we don't put the value on God because we're like, God, where are you? That's why so many, so many Christians fall away from the faith. That's why 70% of teens fall away from God. Because when life gets hard, especially for teenagers, with everything going on, they're like, where's God? I can't see him. I'm out. And it's sad because adults do that too. We can act like teenagers, all of us. I'm a teenager still. Shoot. 
You know, I could have fallen away from God. But you know what? The, the thing that, that always has kept me with God is the fact that I know that when, that when Jesus died on the cross, he died for 70% of those teens. He died for, for the marriages that are failing because he wants to bring restoration to them. You know, he, he died for the people that are addicted to many things, drugs, all that. He died for them. He saw those moments in all of our lives where we made those mistakes. When he was being whipped, when he was being nailed to a cross, he saw those moments and he saw value on you. But yet we can't see value on God? How does that make sense? God, God died for us willingly knowing that we'd spit at him in the face. We're no better than the Pharisees that slapped him. Honestly. I bet he saw all our faces on there. <laughs> Honestly. But he saw love. But he, he saw where you could go. What you could become. And trust me, hurt and pain comes. It's real. I'm not saying it's not. Like, Jesus isn't like the fairy dust that goes, fink. You know, like, he doesn't make everything better. It, it doesn't just, like, go, like, change. Yes, he can make things better in the long run, but you got to wait on him. You really do. Because, like, it's funny because a lot of us will wait in lines. Like, I don't know. I'm that type of guy. Like, I'll wait in line for a shoe and stuff. You know, like, I, I want to. You know, like, that's me. Like, we'll do whatever it takes. You know, for that, but on God, it's like we give him like a 12 second countdown. 12, 11, 10, 9, where's the miracle? 8, 7, 6, 5. Come on, Jesus, Shekinah glory. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> like in worship, we're waiting for the miracle. Like, come on, come on, come on. Like, waiting for the savings account to like get bigger. You know, ah, there we go. Yeah, yes. You know what I mean? Like, no, that's not how it's going to happen. It needs our due diligence. And the thing is, is like, <sighs> we can. We can put values on things, but the thing is, when you have the values on God, you have the right values on the things in your life. And when those things fall apart, it's because there's something, there's a root. Like I said before, you need to put your value on God completely, or else the other things are going to fall apart, right? So that's like me going like this. So I'm not going to do homework, but I do bomb on the test. You think I'm an A student? No, right? I'm not going to be an A student. Like, tests will only take you so far. That's how I survived in history with the C. I don't even need to study, and I'm, like, bomb at history because I'm a freak like that. I'll watch documentaries, like, for fun. When I got home from school, I'd eat with a documentary. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, like, that's why I, I, I just loved it. But the thing is, is, like, you can't, you can't place your values on your family correctly. You can't place your value on your, on, on your finances correctly. You can't place your value on your marriage correctly when it's not even on God. Because when, when stuff comes, when the pain comes, because you know it comes. Trust me, it, it always knows how to ring your doorbell. You know? But when you don't have it on God first, you're going to crumble. You're going to fall. So I saw my mom this weekend. She, she spoke at a women's conference, and she did an amazing job. Shout out to my mom. But the thing is, like, she talked about how, you know, how we can get caught up in our depression. We can get caught up in our hurt, that we stop listening to, to God, right? She says, you know what? Every morning she'd have coffee with the devil, you know why? Because when we don't put God first, someone's going to come. And she's like, ooh, I would have coffee with him. I'd serve him. <laughs> Shoot. But with God, she'd argue. Because we, we tell God the why nots. Why we can't. We tell God, no, 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 you're, that's not true. I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. The devil told me not to. And he's sitting there just sipping his coffee. Just like lying to you easily. Lying to you. Because it's easy when you don't put your values on God. It's so easy. It, it, it's as simple as A, B, C. Easiest one, two, okay, that was, that was a failed joke. Um, but let me tell you this. This is how God sees us. Can you put up 1 Corinthians 6, 19 through 20? Okay, don't you realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and was given to you by God? You do not belong to yourself, for God bought you with a high price, a high price. See, God's salvation for you was free, but it wasn't cheap, okay? He put a high price on you. He said, wow, that's valuable. He saw diamonds in the rough. Some more rough than others, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, so, like, I'm a good diamond, but the person next to me has a little bit more dirt on them, you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm, I'm bad. <laughs> but the thing is, like, God saw you with the high price. Man, the price is right for you. With God, oh, my God, he gets it every time. He's like, they're beautiful. They're smart. They're called. And he gets the price right every time. He's always right about you. But we're, but we're wrong with how we see ourselves in God all the time. Trust me. It happens to us. For me, I think I, I doubt myself like 24-7. Like, I'm like, yeah. Like, I think, it, I think I doubt myself at least maybe like 100 times a day. Like, I'm that guy. 
Uh, I'm the one who's always like second guessing everything. That's like what I get from me and my mom. We do that. We're, we're overthinkers. So, oh my God, I don't know how God does it sometimes. But the thing is, is like, who do we know as someone in the Bible that God put a high price on that saw as beautiful but like really messed up? Can we throw out some names? Everyone's like, shoot, I don't read the Bible. <laughs> throw, out some, throw out some names. Paul? Huh? King David. King David. Yes, I'm going to use King David. Whoever said that, you won um, air million dollars. I don't have that. But the thing is, like, King David, right? Wasn't he like a womanizer? A murderer? Like, I don't think anyone would choose him to say, like, wow, that man's after God's own heart. Like, like if, you knew, if you knew that, like, I don't think that'd be the first thing that pops in your head. Wow, what a, what a man of God. You know, trust me. But, but David, he, he had all those flaws, but he was made after a man after God's own heart. Why? He sinned, but you know what he was great at? He was a great repenter. Oh my God. He couldn't live without God if he didn't, like if his value wasn't on God, he knew that he couldn't walk. Like he felt like without God, he couldn't breathe. And think about this. Like he got lost too. He wasn't just some amazing king. And if you study it, after he murdered, you know, that man that he slept with, his wife, he didn't talk to God or even see the prophet for one year. One year. He didn't even talk to God. He felt too, too shameful. But he, wanted, he stayed there because he devalued God and he put the value on his shame and his guilt. But you know what David says? I didn't give them the scripture, but he says, which I find really beautiful. This is what I stood on when I was younger, when I felt like, like I couldn't do it. It says, don't keep looking at my sins. Remove the stain of my guilt. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a loyal spirit within me. Do not banish me from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. He, he was repentant. He understood what God, what God can do. When you value God, he, he makes you become everything you're not. He's like, God, I beg of you, after one whole year of feeling alone, of feeling hurt, he realized the answer was right in front of me. I just got to go to God. It's that simple. I just got to go to God. That's how he became a, a man after God's own heart, because of his, his mistakes. Do you know what the, the exchange and currency of heaven, how that works? Do you know what, how you exchange that? You know how you exchange like money? Like when we go to like Mexico, you exchange your dollars for pesos. You know how that works, right? Man, tough crowd. All right. Thank you. Thank you, whoever said that. But the thing is, is like for heaven, if you give God all your addictions, you give God all your shortcomings, you give God all your pain, all your heart, every reason why you think you're not good enough, oh my God, that's a beautiful exchange. Uh, Jesus is like, bring it to me. Like, he's waiting so patiently. He's waiting for you to just give it to him. Because it doesn't it say in the Bible that he gives us beauty for our ashes? Oh, my God. If, if you just give him all those things that you, that you feel are holding you back, and you come like David, and you just be like, here you go, God. That, that is an amazing offering to him. That's when he's like, all right, I'm going to rock your world. <laughs> that, it's, as, it's as simple as that. But it's are you willing to allow yourself to be vulnerable? Can you put up my scripture of 2 Samuel 24, 24? So let me give you some background on this. So David, right, he messed up again. How many of us have messed up over and over with God? Some people haven't, I guess. I have. But the thing is, like, David messed up again, right? And, and he's given these three options of, like, okay, either, like, this, this can happen, this can happen, right? And a famine breaks out into the land. Like, 70,000 people die, right? And God's like, okay. I need you to make an offering, right? And then he's like, okay. So he goes, he goes to this man's land. And he's like, hey, I need to make a place of offering, blah, blah, blah. Let me take your land. And the guy's like, okay, so think about this. Like Elon Musk, if he goes to your house, right, and are you going to charge him to sleep there? Some people are like, yeah. <laughs> me, I want to make a great impression. I'll let him sleep there. Then I'll ask for money in the morning. <laughs> but like, I'm not just be like, hey, 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 one million. You know what I mean? Like, no. I would have let him in. Okay, if Jesus, if Jesus came to your house, like suddenly, and he's like, yo, can I crash here? Would you charge him? No, you'd be, you'd be pretty, <laughs> you're, you're pretty far gone if you, you'd charge God. But like, I'd let him in for free. I'd be like, oh, come on in. Like, shoot, bless the house while you're at it. Uh, sleep in every room. I'll sleep on the couch. You know, just take turns. Every, put, a, put an alarm clock every hour to change rooms. You know what I mean? Like, that's what I'd do. So it makes sense that this guy would want to give David his, his land for free. Right? He's like, all right, you can have it for free. And this is what David says. The king replied to A, because I can't pronounce that. <laughs> no, 
I insist on buying it, for I will not present burnt offerings to the Lord my God that have cost me nothing. So David paid him 50 pieces of silver for the threshing floor and the oxen. It has to cost you something. You know what that cost is? Your shortcomings. Your pains. It's nothing too difficult. God just wants you to be vulnerable with him. And you know what happened after this? Oh, the, the angel of death was right there, and it stopped right when he offered that sacrifice. Legit stopped. Because he knew God's grace would say, mm-mm. It said, like, you know how he talked about Isaac last time? And he was like, stop. He did that exactly to the angel of death right at the opportune time. He was like, stop. All he needed was him to offer his forgiveness. And we end with this, the last scripture. So we can offer God a sacrifice, but it's no longer a sacrifice of our lives of such like physically like, you know, or like of like oxen and all that. We don't do that anymore. If you're seeing that, call the police. <laughs> okay, because I don't think that's good. Because um, we, don't, we don't sacrifice animals. You don't see like our worship team going like, we see those chains falling, bring up the goat. Like, you know, like, <laughs> they don't do that no more. So what is the sacrifice? What is David telling us as the answer? So what does that look like? It's right here. It's in that same, it's, this is in the same scripture that I said earlier where, God's, where, where, where David's like, don't take your Holy Spirit from me. This is what he ends off with. You do not, desi- do, you do not desire a sacrifice or I would offer one. You don't want a burnt offering. The sacrifice you desire is a broken spirit. You will not project a broken and repentant heart, O oh God. Look with favor on Zion and help her. Rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will be pleased with sacrifices offered in the right spirit, with burnt offerings and whole burnt offerings, and the bull, then again the bulls will be sacrificed on your altar. Key words. The sacrifice you desire is a broken spirit. You will not reject a broken and repentant heart, O oh God. That is... That is like the secret sauce of heaven. All you need to do is come and repent. And be like, God, I'm sorry. That's all he needs. And trust me, it's difficult sometimes. Because we're very prideful as people. Trust me, we are. I love my dog, Vader. Okay, he's a French bulldog. I call him Vader because I'm a Star Wars fan. So like after Darth Vader, you can laugh at me all you want. But you can meet me outside. We'll handle it. Um, (laughs) Just kidding. I got La Carlos for that. <laughs> Just kidding. No, we love you. He'll, he'll hug you. Um, but the thing is, is like, I love my dog Vader. And he's, he, he like is athletic. I think he'd go to the Olympics. This dude can jump our gates now. Like the little gates that we made for him. And I find him in the middle of the street maybe like three times a day now. He like knows how to jump everything. And I'm so pissed when I find him. I'm like, dude, where you been at? Like as if he's going to reply. <laughs> And I'm like, ah, oh. but then he like licks me and I'm like, ah, oh. you know, but that's how God is with us. But except he doesn't do the angry part. He's just like, oh my God, you ran off, but I'm glad you're back. He's like, come here, right? That's how, that's how he is. That's how I love my relationship with my little dog, my son. Because it shows me like, that's how God is with us. Like he has such this unconditional love, just like my dog. Like I could, I could put him in a trunk for like an hour and he'll still come out licking me. I would never do that though. Don't ever do that. <laughs> But like it's, that's, that's how crazy it is. No matter what you do, they'll still love you just like God. No matter what you do. No matter what. Jesus has an unlimited love for you. And I can promise you this. The price is right 24-7, 24 hours a day for you. So if we could put the value on, on all of our mess, man, forget that. I'm going to put a value on God who can take my mess. And youth are talking about hot mess tonight. That's, that's what they're calling it. So me and my sister are going the same way. But the thing is, is like, we cannot allow ourselves to be thrown off of God's plans, God's grace, God's mercy because of that mess. Enough. I'm tired of marriages failing in church. I'm tired of seeing people fall away. I've been in, I've been in, a pastor's kid for a long time, and I've been a, you know, the child of someone who's in ministry. I've seen people leave. I've seen people go because of hurt, because of pain, because they feel like God isn't there for them anymore. You know how many times it's broken my heart? Because I know how much God loves for them. And God has a love for you. So much. Unexplainable. Uh, indescribable. I can't, I can't explain it. But if you want to figure out your own explanation, repent. We all need to repent. 
I messed up today. I bet some of you messed up today, some more than others. But the thing is, no one has their perfect day. But we get to go to God every day, not feeling any bit of shame. The shame that we feel, that's the enemy. Stop having coffee with him. Stop serving him a plate in the cup. How about you? You just get on your knees one day and just cry out to God. That's what I did today. I felt like I couldn't preach today. I was like, man, I hate this. I feel like I'm always going back and forth, back and forth with my feelings. Because I preach up here, you know, it's great, but I'm preaching myself too. Shoot. Sometimes I cry while I'm writing. I'm like, because <laughs> I'm not perfect. Nobody who stands up here is perfect, and nobody who's sitting on these seats are perfect. But, God, but God's grace, man. Only if you, could, if you could grasp it. But you can. You can get a little taste of his love every day you go and seek him. Every day you go and find him. Trust me, the price is right for you. Don't miss it. He loves you. And we love you. And I know that with God, we can do the impossible. We can change those statistics. We can change it. Like how I changed, like in three days. <laughs> like, best student. You know, give God his time, and he could do something amazing in you. You won't even look like the person you were before. He can change you completely if you just let him. If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below and we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.